Well, I think new media has basically taken over our lives. Um, there's actually some recent statistics that show that people are spending more time online or connected to the internet or mobile phones in some way than they are, do, than they are watching television. So it, the latest statistics are at least 17 hours a week as an, a, an average across all age groups are connected to new media in some way. It's true that every age group is doing something different with it, I think. Um, certainly the kids are online creating their own content. They're the users who are generating all the, a lot of, that, of their own content that's going on YouTube and everywhere else. <clears throat> Um, but probably my own daughter, for example, who's 19 years old, she's online chatting with her friends all the time. That's her main thing. She could live without anything else, but she couldn't live without her mobile phone and that chat function on the internet. So that's kind of a girl teen usage. Um, we're seeing more and more the women are actually going more and more online than they have been in the past, and they're playing games, but they're not playing the shoot 'em games, they're playing strategy games. Um, they're also, of course, researching a lot. Um, the guys, the younger guys, they will spend their hours with uh, the shooting games and um, war games, and um, that seems to be pretty consistent over the youth and young adult age group. Um, little kids, we're seeing <clears throat> preschool kids online, they're doing um, little drawings, they're playing simple games, they're doing that with their parents, so you'll see a little two-year-old sitting in their parent's lap and they're playing, they, they're learning how to coordinate their hand-eye coordination to use the mouse and it's quite fascinating to see uh, these little kids. And of course, they even have their own phones now. And there's little games for kids on the phones, you know, to keep the kids busy while they're shopping with their mothers. <laughs> it's, um, it's shocking in a certain way, but that's evolution for you, I guess. Um, I think television isn't going to die overnight or anything. So it's here. Um, but it's going to evolve a bit. And the way it's structured with conventional networks and specialties, all of that's going to shift. And the way people use it is definitely going to shift. I don't think we're going to need programmers who are going to schedule programs because people are simply not going to sit down at 9 o'clock every Friday night to watch whatever it is that they're going to watch. They're going to do it when they want, where they want. We all know that now. So there's some radical changes happening in the way that's all going to be structured. Uh, and of course, the revenue model advertising is definitely shifting uh, from television to online, where they can really target their audiences. And there's a lot of advantages to advertisers to going online. We're pushing, you know, we're still pushing. The conventional broadcasters are still reluctant to accept all of this. The advertisers are still figuring out the models, but that's all coming. And in a few years from now, we're going to look back and laugh and wonder why, you know, we ever thought it wouldn't evolve, but uh, I'm, I'm sure it will. <laughs> so the way we work here at the Bell Broadcasting Media Fund is that you have to have a television program as well as a new media project based on that TV program. So in order to qualify here, you do have to pass through the gatekeeper and the broadcaster does have to say yes or no. But the opportunities are definitely out there. Forget the television broadcasters and go directly online. Um, we've had some great examples of dramatic series that have started online. Um, some of them have stayed online and others have evolved to go on to television. There's nothing stopping anybody from doing that. So we can all come up with the greatest ideas. If, as long as we can find the financing, we put it online, we have to figure out how to market it all. Uh, a series like Sanctuary, which is you know the biggest model we have in Canada right now, which uh, was shot for online, um, quite a high budget, relatively speaking, and was so successful online that uh, broadcasters turned it into a television series. Now, they're talking about doing an interactive online component, which is based on the series, but it becomes interactive, and it's a whole other experience, rather than just watching the stream viewing of the program. So it's all of those things are evolving, and I think broadcasters are feeling threatened because they can see that a lot of entertainment content is being produced without their involvement, and of course it's taking audiences away from them. Um, so it is threatening, but there's lots of opportunity there for broadcasters to open up as well. They've got huge brands, they've got real power in marketing, they could do an incredible amount of things online which is almost limitless. But the broadcasters have to see the new model. There's no reason why they can't um, expand their own um, platforms and start producing projects for online directly. Why not? Um, 
But the model is, is changing, and people are not going to sit and watch scheduled programming. They're not going to need Canadian broadcasters, for example, to show them American programming. We see so much of the American programming being licensed here. They're going to be able to download it and get all that American programming that they want from any source. So the only way Canadian broadcasters are going to make themselves unique is by doing a lot of original Canadian content. So that will be interesting to see how that evolves. Uh, so I think in, in the content and certainly in the, um, the process of scheduling, the formatting, that's all going to change. Um, attention spans are certainly getting shorter. To get people to sit down and watch a two-hour movie on television is more challenging than it used to be. Because um, people are used to spending 15 or 20 minutes maximum looking at anything. Most likely five minutes, anything beyond that. For, for the youth, that's a really demanding of their attention span to go beyond the five minutes. So it has to be terrific content. So all of that is going to change for sure. Um, what I was going to say before about the irony of having a successful program on, um, on the web is the cost. Because the more successful it is, of course, the more expensive it is to send that out to hundreds of thousands of users. Um, the broadband and download and all those fees are expensive to the owner. So it's much more expensive to um, provide a stream television program to 100,000 people online than it is to broadcast it. You can have millions watching the same television program. There's no additional cost. But it's an additional cost for everyone who downloads something from your website. So that's, that's going to be an interesting challenge. So I think when we're talking about mass media, things that pe lots of people want to do and see at the same time, for example, um, live sporting events, news, some big current affairs thing, those kinds of things where they are the water cooler stories where everybody wants to see them at the same time and discuss them. That's what television may very well evolve to be and play a really vital role. And that's where you'll have the millions of people watching at the same time. Whereas um, all the other stuff, which is not time dependent, um, will become more spread out and available to people whenever they want, however they want, on whatever platform they want. <laughs>